The time has finally come for us to build with Langchain agents. And in today's video, I'm going to show you four different types of agents available to us with Langchain. Today's video will be available in the Gen AI and LLM projects playlist on my channel. Now, the whole reason why I taught Langchain on this channel and the whole reason I made all the previous Langchain videos like Langchain memory, Langchain tools and custom tools is that I wanted to cover Langchain agents. And the thing is, agents need to work with tools chains and memory and you can't really understand how agents work without understanding all those things. So in case you haven't seen all those videos, please check them out. They're all part of the same playlist and in the future, we're going to be building more projects with Langchain agents and this is why I'm creating today's video and showing you how different types of agents work in Langchain. Now the four types of agents that we're looking at are zero shot React agents, conversational React agents, React doc store agents and self ask with search agents. I'm going to be taking you through a cool app code file and the link for this file will be in the description of this video. So make sure you make a copy of it so that you can access it later. Now I highly recommend you stick around till the end of this video so that you understand all the four types of agents just like it was important for us to understand all the four types of memories so that you know which one to use based on your use case. Similarly, understanding the type of agents is also really important so that we can apply them at the right place. Now we start off by installing Langchain, OpenAI, Google search results, Wikipedia and SQL Alchemy because we will be getting our agent to perform some SQL queries for us and it's going to be quite interesting. Then we set our OpenAI API key using get pass and from Langchain we import OpenAI and set up our LLM to OpenAI and pass in the API key. I'm going to keep the temperature to zero because like I said, I'll be creating some SQL queries on some data and I want it to be as accurate as possible. If I wanted a creative chat bot that replies with something interesting, then I would choose something closer to one. In the memory video, we created our function that used OpenAI callbacks to count the total number of tokens we spent in each interaction with the LM, and I've copied the same function here. Now, before we move forward, let's clearly define an agent. If you want to understand what agents really are, you have to watch the agents explainer video that I created as part of the LLM concepts playlist. And that playlist generally has all the videos related to the concepts that we're using in these projects. So it'll be very helpful if you quickly watch all those videos. Now, in that video, I mentioned about agents that can use tools to perform a specific task. And that's the type of agents you're going to be usually building. So an agent can be defined as following. Agents use an LLM to determine which actions to take and in what order. An action can either be using a tool and observing its output or returning to the user. Before I use the agents to run SQL queries, I first need to create a database. And I'm going to create a database of stocks. So there will be an ID, ticker name, the price of the stock and the date on which this price was tracked. So from SQL Alchemy, I import metadata and create my metadata object. And from SQL Alchemy, I also import columns, integer, string, table, date, and float, as I will be needing these data types to define my stocks data. So I create my stocks table with the first column as object ID, which is of type integer, and it's the primary key. The next column is stock ticker of type string, then the price of type float, and finally the date of type date. And then I create the engine, which is SQL Lite, now I want to start populating this database. So I create an observations object with 10 rows each tracking two stocks named ABC and XYZ across different dates and the price is changing across the rows. Now all we have to do is insert this newly created data into our stocks table and we create an insert objects function after importing insert functionality from SQL Alchemy and we pass in all our values. We use the for loop to iterate over each of the values and insert these objects. Now you already know the concept of chains and to work with our SQL database, we have something called as the SQL database chain and that's part of the Langchain experimental library. And this is why we have to import it and in the next cell you see that we've imported SQL database chain from Langchain experimental.sql. We set up our SQL database by passing the engine and then create our SQL database chain by passing the LLM and the database. We get a warning, so it's not an error, so we can ignore it for now. Now that we have our database ready, we can start building our agents. The first agent we're going to work with is called the zero shot agent, meaning the agent will not have several interdependent interactions, but only one, meaning the agent will have no memory and you'll get more clarity when we see it in action. So we're going to be working with create SQL agent that's available to us via Langchain agents. And this particular agent is good at working with SQL. And that's exactly what we need. And then we're going to import the SQL database toolkit from agents toolkits, because as we've seen in the previous videos, agents aren't really much without tools, right? And this tool will give us the ability to work better with SQL databases. Then we import agent type, which is going to give us access to the three types of agents. 
Next, we create our agent and call it agent executor. We are initializing it as create SQL agent and passing our LLM, passing our toolkit and I've set verbose is equal to true because we want to see the agent's thinking process. Then we set our agent type and we know that this is our first example. And since we're going to be working with the zero shot agent, we pass that to our agent type field and we cap the max iterations to three. Now agents many times get stuck in infinite loops and the default value of this field is 15. Now you know that using agents can be expensive because they consume quite a bit of tokens. So I'm going to keep the iterations to just three. Next, we give it an interesting SQL problem to solve. We ask it, what is the multiplication of the ratio between the prices for the stock ABC and XYZ on January 3rd and the ratio between the same stock prices on January 4th. In the output, we get a new query, select price from stocks where stock ticker is equal to ABC and date is 3rd Jan. And we will divide it with the price of XYZ on 3rd Jan. But here things go a bit wrong. There should have been multiplication here instead of another division sign because right ahead we are supposed to find the ratio between these prices on Jan 4th. So there should have been division sign there and a multiplication sign here. But anyway, it was at least able to attempt a complex query like this. I think that's good enough. But just because we're curious, let's check out the prompt template of the SQL agent. So here we can see something great, which is we've restricted the agent from running insert, update, delete, and drop commands on the database. And it can just run queries to view the data. And that just makes it really safe to use. So at this point, some of you might have a question, how are agents different from chains? Now in the agent's output, we see tools being used and we also see a thought process. And the output, we have different things like thought, action, action input, observation sequence, etc. So we can say that agents give the LLM the ability to reason on how to best use the tools to solve our query and then combine multiple tools in intelligent ways. In addition to that, as we had seen in the Crew AI agents project recently on this channel, agents collaborate quite well to produce a really high quality answer, something that LLMs cannot do on their own. Now we can move on to the next type of agent called the conversational agent, which uses memory because most of the times we want an agent that remembers things that we've talked about and can also reason about them. And this is where we use conversational agents. So let's see this in action. We first import some maths tools, then we import conversation buffer memory, which we have seen in the memory video, and we initialize our memory. Then we initialize our agent and we set the agent type to conversation, react description, and we pass it our tools we initialize above. And we pass it our memory, which is the conversation buffer memory. Then we call our conversational agent and ask it the question, what's the result of an investment of $10,000 growing at 8% annually for five years with compound interest? So it uses the calculator tool, which is available to it, and it gets the answer $14,693, which seems correct. I mean, I've not calculated the exact amount, but 8% is like $800. And even if you don't consider compound interest, that's already $4,000. So I was expecting an answer more than $14,000. And next we print out the prompt template for this conversational agent. And we see quite a lot of details, like what's the agent designed to do and what kind of tools it has access to, including the calculator tool that we just used and how it should follow a particular format with thought, action, action input, and observation. Then we test it out again. And we say, if we start with $15,000 and follow the same 8% compound interest, how much more would we have as compared to the previous scenario? Now notice the word previous scenario. This means that this agent will have context of the interaction we have had previously. And that's because we had passed memory to this agent. So now hopefully you see how tools, agents and memory come together to create something awesome. So in the answer, it says about $7,000 more. And that sounds right to me because you're starting already with $5,000 more because last time you had $10,000 and now you have $15,000. And in five years, that difference can increase to $7,000. Again, I've not done the exact calculations, but it looks quite logical. Let's now move on to our third type of agent called the doc store agent, which can search and look up a doc store like Wikipedia. So it will have the ability to search and look up because we will give it those tools. So in the next cell, we import Wikipedia from Langchain and we import doc store explorer from Langchain agents and we create our doc store explorer by passing in Wikipedia. And we have two tools, like I mentioned earlier, the search tool and the lookup tool. So in the search tool, in the function, we pass doc store.search and it has the same name and description as search. And the lookup tool, we pass in doc store.lookup in the function and it has the same name as and description. Now it's time to initialize our agent with the tools we just created, our LLM, and we give it the name react doc store. And all we now have to do is call our count tokens function like we have been calling until now. And we just pass our doc store agent with the question, what were Archimedes last words? So we know that since this is a doc store agent, it's going to go and look for that information on Wikipedia. 
In the output, you notice that first it starts with the search tool and searches for Archimedes. And most interestingly, the agent shares its thoughts with us. So it says, I need to search Archimedes and find his final words. Now the search tool is able to find information on Ar Archimedes, but not his final words. And so in the thought it says, the paragraph does not mention his last words. I need to look up last words. And this is where our lookup agent comes into play. And right enough, it's able to find the final words which are do not disturb my circle. Now it's time for our fourth agent. But before we get there, do let me know in the comments how you're enjoying these videos. And I hope now that we have many Langchain videos in the right order, all the information is now connecting and you're able to follow along quite well. All that we have learned about Langchain in the previous videos has been really helpful for us to understand today's video. Now these videos take a lot of research and quite a lot of time to make. And this channel is really small and the content I make is for a super niche audience. And it doesn't get served very well by the algorithm since I don't use any clickbaits. So I quickly want to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is you. Yes, you're the sponsor of this video and this channel is completely dependent on you sharing these videos and liking and commenting on these videos. And most importantly, subscribing to the channel because I don't have any paid partnerships or sponsorships. And this is a really small channel with extremely technical and niche content, which doesn't really get served by the YouTube algorithm. So make sure you share this with your friends and you like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to join our Discord community where we hang out, the link for which is in my YouTube profile. You'll find people just like yourself, so I'll see you there. So our fourth agent is quite interesting. It's able to extract information with the search engine, but most importantly, it's able to ask follow-up questions and use the search functionality to get intermediate answers that help it to get to the final answer. So we import OpenAI and SERP API wrapper along with our initialize agent function that we have seen before. So we have search, which has a SERP API wrapper initialized with the SERP API key and our tool's name is intermediate answer and we pass in search.run as the function. And then it's to initialize our agents. So we pass in the tools, the LLM and the agent's name, which is self ask with search. And this name is quite interesting because that's what this agent does. It keeps asking itself questions just like a human would do when researching and that'll help it enter into a complete chain of research and get to a high quality answer. So instead of running this agent, which can be extremely expensive due to the sheer number of tokens it's going to consume since it keeps iterating with questions, I'm instead going to show you the prompt template for this agent so that you get an idea on how it works. So when we print out the prompt template, we see the instructions given to it in the output. And let's take the example of the first question, which is who lived longer, Muhammad Ali or Alan Turing? Now, this is a logical question which can be answered by looking up the internet with two different queries. So it creates its own follow up questions like how old was Muhammad Ali when he died? And it gets an intermediate answer. Muhammad Ali was 74 years old when he died. The next follow up question is how old was Alan Turing when he died? And it gets the intermediate answer as Alan Turing was 41 years old when he died. And that's how we want it to be able to get to the final answer, which is Muhammad Ali lived longer. Similarly, there are more such questions requiring a varying number of follow up questions. And that's how we are training this chatbot. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for all that you've done for this channel. And I'll see you in the next video.